Vladimir Konstantinovich Bukovsky, Russian, Vladimir Konstantinovich Bukovsky B. The 30th of December 1942 is a Russian-born activist. From the late 1950s to the mid 1970s, he was a prominent figure in the Soviet dissident movement, well known at home and abroad. He spent a total of 12 years in the psychiatric prison hospitals, labor camps, and prisons of the Soviet Union. Since being expelled from the country in late 1976, he has remained in vocal opposition to the Soviet system and the shortcomings of its successor regimes in Russia. An activist, a writer, and a neurophysiologist, he is celebrated for his part in the campaign to expose and halt the political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union, a member of the International Advisory Council of the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, a director of the Gratitude Fund set up in 1998 to commemorate and support former dissidents, and a member of the International Council of the New York City-based Human Rights Foundation. Bukowski is a senior fellow of the Cato Institute in Washington, D.C. in 2001. Vladimir Bukovsky received the Truman Reagan Medal of Freedom, awarded annually since 1993 by the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Early life Vladimir Bukovsky was born in the town of Belibay in the Bashkir Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic today the Republic of Bashkortostan in the Russian Federation, to which his family was evacuated during World War II. After the war he and his parents returned to Moscow where his father Konstantin was a well-known Soviet journalist. During his last year at school Vladimir was expelled for creating and editing an unauthorized magazine. To meet the requirements to apply for a university place he completed his secondary education at evening classes. <laughs> Soviet-era activism Topic. Rallies topic. Mayakovsky Square In September 1960, Bukovsky entered Moscow University to study biology. There he and some friends decided to revive the informal Mayakovsky Square poetry readings which began after a statue to the poet was unveiled in central Moscow in 1958. They made contact with earlier participants of the readings such as Vladimir Osipov, the editor of Boomerang 1960, and Yuri Galanskov who issued The Phoenix 1961, two examples of literary samizdat. It was then that the 19-year-old Bukovsky wrote his critical notes on the Communist Youth League or Komsomol. Later, this text was given the title, Theses on the Collapse of the Komsomol, by the KGB. Bukovsky portrayed the USSR as an illegal society facing an acute ideological crisis. The Komsomol was moribund, he asserted, having lost both moral and spiritual authority, and he called for its democratization. This text, and his other activities, brought Bukowski to the attention of the authorities. He was interrogated twice before being thrown out of the university in autumn 1961. Bukowski was arrested on 1 June 1963. He was later convicted, in absentia, by reason on his insanity. Under Article 70.1, Anti-Soviet Agitation and Propaganda, of the RSFSR Criminal Code. The official charge was the making and possession of photocopies of anti-Soviet literature, namely two copies of the banned work The New Class by Milovan Gilas. Bukovsky was examined by Soviet psychiatrists, declared to be mentally ill, schizophrenia and sent for treatment at the Special Psychiatric Hospital in Leningrad where he remained for almost two years, until February 1965. It was there he became acquainted with General Petro Grigorenko, a fellow inmate. Topic. The Glasnost Rally, 5 December 1965 In December 1965, Bukovsky helped prepare a demonstration on Pushkin Square in central Moscow to protest against the trial of the writers Andrei Sinievsky and Yuli Daniel. He circulated the civic appeal by mathematician and poet Alexander Essenin Volpin, which called on the authorities to obey the Soviet laws requiring glasnost in the judicial process, e.g., the admission of the public and the media to any trial. The demonstration on 5 December 1965 Constitution Day became known as the Glasnost Meeting or Rally, and marked the beginning of the openly active Soviet civil rights movement. Bukovsky himself was unable to attend. 
Three days earlier, he was arrested, charged with distributing the appeal, and kept in various sakushkas, among them Hospital No. 13 at Lublino, Stolbovaya, and the Serbsky Institute, until July 1966. The right to demonstrate, 1967 On the 22nd of January 1967 Bukovsky, Vadim Delani, Yevgeny Kashev and Viktor Kaustov held another demonstration on Pushkin Square. They were protesting against the recent arrests of Alexander Ginzburg, Yuri Galanskov, Alexei Dobrovolsky and Vera Lashkova finally prosecuted in January 1968 in the trial of the four and asserting their own right to protest. On 16 September 1966 a new law, Article 190.3, had been introduced which classified any public gatherings or demonstrations as a crime. On 1 September 1967, at his own trial, Bukovsky used his final words to attack the regime failure to respect the law or follow legal procedures. He invoked Article 125 of the still current 1936 Soviet Constitution to defend the right to organize demonstrations and other public protests. He further suggested that the prosecution had repeatedly failed to observe the revised 1961 Code of Criminal Procedure in its conduct of the case. Bukovsky's final words in court circulated widely in a Samizdat collection of such addresses and as part of a collection of materials about the demonstration and subsequent trials compiled by Pavel Litvinov. Fellow protesters Vadim Delani and Yevgeny Kashev admitted regret for their actions but not their guilt, they received suspended sentences and were released. Bukovsky was defiant and, like fellow demonstrator Viktor Kaustov, convicted in February 1967, was given three years in an ordinary regime. Corrective labor camp. Bukovsky was sent to Bor in the Voronezh region to serve his sentence. He was released in January 1970. The campaign against the abuse of psychiatry In the 1960s and 1970s, the Soviet authorities began the widespread use of psychiatric treatment as a form of punishment and deterrence for the independent-minded. This involved unlimited detention in a sakushka, as such places were popularly known, which might be conventional psychiatric hospitals or psychiatric prison hospitals set up e.g. the Leningrad Special Psychiatrical Hospital as part of an existing penal institution. Healthy individuals were held among mentally ill and often dangerous patients, they were forced to take various psychotropic drugs, they might also be incarcerated in prison-type institutions under overall control of the KGB. In 1971, Bukowski managed to smuggle to the West over 150 pages documenting the political abuse of psychiatric institutions in the Soviet Union. In a letter addressed to Western psychiatrists, and written in a deliberately restrained tone, Bukowski asked them to consider if the evidence justified the isolation of several dissidents, and urged them to discuss the matter at the next International Congress of Psychiatrists. The documents were released to the press in March 1971 by a small French group called the International Committee for the Defense of Human Rights. Bukowski's letter appeared on 12 March in The Times London, and later in the British Journal of Psychiatry Bukowski was arrested on 29 March and held in custody for nine months before being put on trial in January 1972. The information Bukowski had gathered and sent to the West galvanized human rights activists worldwide and those within the Soviet Union. It also struck a chord among psychiatrists. In September that year 44 European psychiatrists wrote to the Times London expressing grave doubts about the diagnoses of the six people concerned. At a meeting in November 1971, the World Federation for Mental Health called on its members to investigate the charges and defend the right to free opinion where it was threatened. These responses were carefully documented by the dissident human rights periodical Chronicle of Current Events, which also recorded the many statements made by Bukowski's friends and fellow rights activists in his defense. As the person at the center of this unprecedented international row, Bukowski waited in almost total isolation, without access to a lawyer, to be tried and sent to the camps or a special psychiatric hospital. Responding to public pressure, the World Psychiatric Association finally condemned Soviet practices at its Sixth World Congress in 1977 and set up a review committee to monitor misuse. In 1983, the Soviet representatives withdrew from the World Psychiatric Association rather than face expulsion. Bukowski later characterized this reaction as the most important victory for the dissident form of glasnost. 
Topic: <laughs> Final arrest 1971 and imprisonment. Following the release of the documents, Bukowski was denounced in Pravda as a malicious hooligan, engaged in anti-Soviet activities, and arrested on 29 March 1971. At first held in Lefertovo prison, in August, Bukowski spent approximately three months in the Serbsky Institute, which this time pronounced him mentally sound and able to stand trial. During the trial in January 1972, Bukowski was accused of slandering Soviet psychiatry, contacts with foreign journalists, and the possession and distribution of Samizdat. On this occasion, he again used his final words to the court to reach a much wider audience when the text circulated in Samizdat. He was sentenced to two years in prison, five in a labor camp, and five more in internal exile. While in prison, Bukowski and his fellow inmate, the psychiatrist Semyon Glusman, wrote a brief 20 page manual on psychiatry for dissidents, which was widely published abroad, in Russian 1975, and in many other languages English, French, Italian, German, Danish. It instructed potential victims of political psychiatry how to behave during interrogation to avoid being diagnosed as mentally ill. Topic. Deportation from the USSR 1976. The fate of Bukowski and other political prisoners in the Soviet Union had been repeatedly brought to world attention by Western diplomats and human rights groups such as the relatively new Amnesty International. In December 1976, Bukowski was deported from the USSR and exchanged at Zurich Airport by the Soviet government for the imprisoned General Secretary of the Communist Party of Chile, Luis Corvalin. In his 1978 autobiography, Bukowski describes how he was brought to Switzerland in handcuffs. The widely publicized exchange increased public awareness in the West about Soviet dissidents. A fellow dissident, Vadim Delani wrote an epigram on the occasion. They exchanged a hooligan for Luis Corvalin. What kind of bitch do you think we could switch for Brezhnev? In March 1977, U.S. President Jimmy Carter met with Bukowski at the White House. In the USSR the meeting was seen by dissidents and rights activists as a sign of the newly elected president's willingness to stress human rights in his foreign policy. The event provoked harsh criticism by Soviet leaders. Bukowski moved to Great Britain where he settled in Cambridge and resumed his studies in biology, disrupted 15 years earlier, see above by his expulsion from Moscow University. Topic: Life in the West. Bukowski gained a master's degree in biology at Cambridge University. He also wrote and published To Build a Castle, My Life as a Dissenter 1978, the title in Russian, and The Wind Returns is a biblical allusion. The book was translated into English, French and German. It was published in Russian the following year by Chalidze Publishers in New York. Today the Russian original is available online via a number of websites. Since he has lived in the West, Bukowski has written many essays and polemical articles. These not only criticized the Soviet regime and, later, that of Vladimir Putin, but also exposed Western gullibility in the face of Soviet abuses and, in some cases, what he believed to be Western complicity in such crimes. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, following the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, Bukowski campaigned successfully for an official UK and US boycott of the summer 1980 Olympics in Moscow. During the same years he voiced concern about the activities and policies of the Western peace movements. In 1983, together with Cuban dissident Armando Valladares, Bukowski co-founded and was later elected president of Resistance International. The anti-communist organization was run from a small office in Paris by Soviet dissidents and émigrés, notably Vladimir Maximov and Eduard Kuznetsov. In 1985 it expanded into the American Foundation for Resistance International. Among the prominent members of the board were Albert Jolies and Jean Kirkpatrick while Midge Dechter, Yuri Yaramagayev, Richard Pearl, Saul Bellow, Robert Conquest and Martin Coleman were on the body's advisory committee. The foundation aimed to be a coordinating center for dissident and democratic movements seeking to overturn communism in Eastern Europe and elsewhere. It organized protests in the communist countries and in the West, and opposed Western financial assistance to communist governments. 
The foundation also created the National Council to Support Democratic Movements National Council for Democracy with the goal of aiding the emergence of democratic rule of law governments, and providing assistance with the writing of constitutions and the formation of civil institutions. In March 1987, Bukowski and nine other émigré authors Ernst Nizvestny, Yuri Lubomov, Vasily Oksonov and Leonid Plyush among them caused a furore in the West and then in the Soviet Union itself when they raised doubts about the substance and sincerity of Mikhail Gorbachev's reforms. Topic: Return to the Soviet Union 1991. In April 1991, Vladimir Bukovsky visited Moscow for the first time since his deportation 15 years before. In the run up to the 1991 presidential election, Boris Yeltsin's campaign team included Bukovsky on their list of potential vice presidential running mates. In the end, Army officer Alexander Rutskoy, a veteran of the 1979-1989 war in Afghanistan and hero of the Soviet Union was selected. On 5 December 1991, both of Bukowski's Soviet-era convictions were annulled by a decree of the RSFSR Supreme Court. The following year President Yeltsin formally restored Bukowski's Russian citizenship. He had never been deprived of his Soviet citizenship, despite deportation from the country. Post-Soviet Union activities British and European psychiatrists assessing the documents on psychiatric abuse released by Bukowski characterized him in 1971. The information we have about Vladimir Bukowski suggests that he is the sort of person who might be embarrassing to authorities in any country because he seems unwilling to compromise for convenience and personal comfort, and believes in saying what he thinks in situations which he clearly knows could endanger him. But such people often have much to contribute, and deserve considerable respect." Soon after THR collapse of the Soviet Union Vladimir Bukovsky was again out of favor with the Russian authorities. He supported Yeltsin against the Supreme Soviet in the 1993 Russian constitutional crisis in October that year but criticized the new constitution of Russia approved two months later, as being designed to ensure a continuation of Yeltsin's power. According to Bukowski, Yeltsin became a hostage of the security agencies from 1994 onwards, and a restoration of KGB rule was inevitable. After the publication of Judgment in Moscow in French 1995 and then in Russian 1996, he was denied entry to Russia from October 1996 until 2007, in the run up to the 2008 presidential elections. Topic. Judgment in Moscow 1995. In 1992, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, President Yeltsin's government invited Bukovsky to serve as an expert witness at the trial before the Constitutional Court where Russia's communists were suing Yeltsin for banning their party and taking its property. The respondent's case was that the CPSU itself had been an unconstitutional organization. To prepare his testimony, Bukovsky requested and was granted access to a large number of documents from the CPSU Central Committee archives then reorganized into the Central Depository for Contemporary Documentation or TSKHSD. With the help of a small handheld scanner and a laptop computer, he managed secretly to make photocopies of many of the documents some with high security clearance, including KGB reports to the Central Committee. The copies were then smuggled to the West. Bukowski hoped that an international tribunal in Moscow might play a similar role to the first Nuremberg trial 1945-1946 in post-Nazi Germany and help the country begin to overcome the legacy of communism. This did not happen. The trial of the CPSU fell far short of that goal. The Soviet Communist Party was found to be an unconstitutional organization, but former communists were allowed to play a leading part in the government of post-Soviet Russia and, as the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, to act as the country's main political opposition. Former CPSU, even Politburo, members such as Alexander Yakovlev Russian politician had a prominent place in the Presidential Commission for the post-October 1917 victims of political repression. Bukowski expressed his deep disappointment with this failure in his writings and interviews. Having failed to finish off conclusively the communist system, we are now in danger of integrating the resulting monster into our world. It may not be called communism anymore, but it has retained many of its dangerous characteristics.
Until a Nuremberg-style tribunal passes its judgment on all the crimes committed by communism, it is not dead and the war is not over. It took several years and a team of assistants to piece together the scanned fragments many only half a page in width of the hundreds of documents photocopied by Bukowski and then, in 1999, to make them available online. Many of the same documents were extensively quoted and cited in Bukowski's Judgment in Moscow 1995, where he described and analyzed what he had uncovered about recent Soviet history and about the relations of the USSR and the CPSU with the West. The book was translated into several languages. It was not published at the time in English. Random House bought the rights to the manuscript, but the publisher, in Bukowski's words, tried to make the author rewrite the whole book from the liberal left political perspective. Bukowski resisted, explaining to the Random House editor that he was allergic to political censorship because of certain peculiarities of my biography. The contract was subsequently cancelled. The French edition appeared in 1995 as Jugumana Moscow. The book was also published in Russian 1996 and certain other Slavic languages, most notably the Polish edition which for a time became a bestseller. In 2016, it was published in Italian, by Spirally, with the title GLI Archivi Segreti di Mosca, an English-language translation is being released in May 2019. Topic. Potential 1992 mayoral candidacy In 1992, a group of liberal deputies of the Moscow City Council proposed Bukovsky's candidacy for elections of the new mayor of Moscow, following the resignation of the previous mayor, Gavriil Popov. Bukovsky refused the offer, stating that to fulfill the mayor's duties he would need a large team of intellectuals committed to radical reform, and there was a lack of such people in the country. Deputy Mayor Yuri Luzhkov took over, and ran the city from 1992 to 2010. Topic. Potential 1996 presidential candidacy In early 1996, a group of Moscow academics, journalists and intellectuals suggested that Vladimir Bukovsky should run for president of Russia as an alternative candidate to both incumbent President Boris Yeltsin and his main challenger Gennady Zyuganov of the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. However, no formal nomination process was initiated. Topic. Memento Gulag In 2001, Bukovsky was elected president of the Comitatus pro Libertatibus, Comitati per la Liberta Freedom Committees in Florence, an Italian libertarian organization which promoted an annual Memento Gulag, or Memorial Day devoted to the victims of communism, on 7 November the anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. The Memento Gulag has since been held in Rome, Bucharest, Berlin, La Roche-sur-Yon and Paris. Topic. Contacts with Boris Nemtsov and the Russian opposition In 2002, Boris Nemtsov, former Deputy Prime Minister of Russia who was then an elected member of the State Duma and leader of the Union of Rightist Forces, paid a visit to Bukovsky in Cambridge. He wanted to discuss the strategy of the Russian opposition. It was imperative, Bukovsky told Nemtsov, that Russian liberals adopt an uncompromising stand toward what he saw as the authoritarian government of President Vladimir Putin. On one of journalist Anna Politovskaya's frequent visits to Britain, she interviewed Vladimir Bukovsky and Boris Berezovsky to provide a comparative analysis of different waves of political emigration. With Bukovsky, the patriarch. As he was called in the published version of her article, she discussed the position of those who had gained political asylum in Britain Ahmed Zakhaev, Alexander Litvinenko, and the attitudes of the UK government of Tony Blair and of the European Parliament to the situation in Chechnya. During their talk Bukovsky expressed disapproval of the way in which Slobodan Milosevic was brought before the Hague Tribunal, in January 2004, with Garry Kasparov, Boris Nemtsov, Vladimir V. Kara Mirza and others, Bukovsky was a co-founder of Committee 2008. 
This umbrella organization of the Russian Democratic Opposition was formed to ensure free and fair elections in 2008 when a successor to Vladimir Putin was elected. In 2005, Bukovsky was among the prominent dissidents of the 1960s and 1970s Gorbanevskaya, Sergei Kovalyov, Eduard Kuznetsov, Alexander Podrabinik, Yelena Bonner, who took part in a documentary series by Vladimir Kara Mirza Jr. They chose freedom. In 2013 Bukovsky was featured in a documentary series by Natella Boltianskaya Parallels, Events, People. In 2009, Bukovsky joined the Council of the New Solidarnost Coalition which brought together a wide range of extra-parliamentary opposition forces. Criticism of torture in Abu Ghraib prison Iraq. As revelations mounted about the sanctioned torture of captives in the Guantanamo Bay detention camp, Abu Ghraib and the CIA secret prisons, Bukowski entered the discussion with an uncompromising attack on the official if covert rationalization of torture. In an 18 December 2005 op-ed in the Washington Post, Bukowski recounted his experience under torture in Lefertovo prison in 1971. Once commenced, he warned, the inertia of torture was difficult to control, corrupting those who carried it out. Torture, he wrote, has historically been an instrument of oppression, not an instrument of investigation or of intelligence gathering. Bukowski explained, Investigation is a subtle process, requiring patience and fine analytical ability, as well as a skill in cultivating one's sources. When torture is condoned, these rare talented people leave the service, having been outstripped by less gifted colleagues with their quick-fix methods, and the service itself degenerates into a playground for sadists. U.S. President Barack Obama repudiated the torture memos on 20 January 2009, two days after taking office. Topic. Fatal defects of the European Union In EUSSR, a booklet written with Pavel Stroyalov and published in 2004, Bukowski exposed what he saw as the Soviet roots of European integration. Two years later, in an interview with the Brussels Journal, Bukowski said he had read confidential documents from secret Soviet files in 1992 which confirmed the existence of a conspiracy to turn the European Union into a socialist organization. The European Union was a monster. He argued, and it must be destroyed, the sooner the better, before it develops into a full-fledged totalitarian state. Meanwhile they are introducing more and more ideology. The Soviet Union used to be a state run by ideology. Today's ideology of the European Union is social democratic, statist, and a big part of it is also political correctness. I watch very carefully how political correctness spreads and becomes an oppressive ideology, not to mention the fact that they forbid smoking almost everywhere now. There were certain parallels, Bukowski warned in his interview, between the formation of the Soviet Union and the European Union. In 2006 he described the perils of the USSR, with its model whereby nationalities and ethnic groups were dissolved to create a new Soviet nation. While Soviet ideology postulated that the state would eventually wither away, Bukowski pointed out that the reality was quite different, the state had become paramount. As an expression of his Eurosceptic position Bukowski is Vice President of the Freedom Association TFA in the United Kingdom and has been a patron of the United Kingdom Independence Party UKIP. In 2007, following a similar line of argument, Bukowski suggested that Russia was too big and should be broken up into several smaller countries. It was an opinion quickly reported to audiences around the world by the new state-funded English-language broadcaster Russia Today. Ten years earlier, Bukowski sketched some of the ways in which cooperation was secured. Beyond those who were recruited as Soviet agents and consciously worked for the USSR, as he explained in Judgment in Moscow 1995, there were men and women whom the KGB and GRU classified as agents of influence and confidential contacts. The majority of these agents of influence, moreover, were not in a literal sense KGB agents. Some distributed Soviet disinformation for idealistic reasons, others were paying off an old debt to the KGB or, on the contrary, expected some new reward or service, others simply did not know what they were doing. The examples are endlessly varied. 
This applied equally, Bukowski cautioned, to post-Stalin generations of specialists on the USSR and Eastern Europe. They had been subjected to similar pressures and inducements in the 1970s and 1980s. The majority of Sovietologists and Slavists, experts on Russia and the Soviet Union, were dependent on the regime for permission to visit the USSR from time to time. A specialist could not secure his place and reputation in the current academic world without that contact, anyone might accuse him of having lost touch and no longer retaining his expertise. The chance to travel to the USSR, however, was closely monitored in those years by the KGB. 2008 presidential candidacy In May 2007, Bukovsky announced his plans to run as candidate for president in the May 2008 Russian presidential election. On 16 December 2007, Bukovsky was officially nominated to run against Dmitry Medvedev and other candidates. The group that nominated Bukovsky as a candidate included Yuri Ryzov, Vladimir V. Kara Mirza, Alexander Podrabinik, Andrei Pionkovsky, Vladimir Pribilovsky, and others. Activists, authors and commentators such as Viktor Shenderovich, Valeria Novodvorskaya and Lev Rubinstein also favored Bukovsky, responding to pro-Kremlin politicians and commentators who expressed doubt about Bukovsky's electoral prospects. His nominators rejected a number of frequently repeated allegations. In Moscow more than 800 citizens of the Russian Federation nominated Bukovsky for president on 16 December 2007. Bukovsky secured the required number of signatures to register and submitted his application to the Central Election Commission on time. The 18th of December 2007, Bukovsky's candidacy received the support of Grigory Yavlinsky, who announced on December 14, 2007, at the Yabloko Party conference that he would forego a campaign of his own and would instead support Bukovsky. The action group in support of Bukovsky's candidacy denied claims by pro-government media that Bukovsky had failed in his campaign to become RF president and in appeals before the RF Constitutional Court, on of December 2007, the Central Electoral Commission turned down Bukowski's application, on the grounds that 1, he had failed to give information about his activities as a writer when submitting his documents, 2, he was holding a British residence permit, and 3, he had not been living in Russia during the past 10 years. Bukovsky appealed against the decision at the RF Supreme Court on 28 December 2007 and, subsequently, before its Cassation Board on 15 January 2008. On 30 March 2011, Bukovsky requested the arrest of Mikhail Gorbachev by the British authorities after submitting to Westminster Magistrates Court materials on crimes against humanity that the former Soviet leader had allegedly committed in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Topic. Crimea, Ukraine, Litvinenko Inquiry 2012-2015 Bukovsky was among the first 34 signatories of Putin Must Go, an online anti-Putin manifesto published on 10 March 2010. In May 2012, Vladimir Putin began his third term as President of the Russian Federation after serving four years as the country's Prime Minister. The following year, Bukovsky published a collection of interviews in Russia which described Putin and his team as the heirs of Lavrenti Beria, Stalin's last and most notorious secret police chief. Following the Winter 2014 Sochi Olympics, the Russian Federation annexed Crimea. The West responded with sanctions targeted at Putin's immediate entourage, and Bukovsky expressed the hope that this would prove the end of his regime. In October 2014, the Russian authorities declined to issue Bukovsky with a new foreign travel passport. The foreign ministry stated that it could not confirm Bukovsky's citizenship. The response was met with surprise from Kremlin's Human Rights Council and the Human Rights Ombudsman of the Russian Federation. On 17 March 2015, at the long delayed inquiry into Alexander Litvinenko's fatal poisoning, Bukovsky gave his views as to why the former FSB man had been murdered. Interviewed on BBC TV eight years before, Bukovsky expressed no doubt that the Russian authorities were responsible for the London death of Litvinenko on 23 November 2006. Topic. Bibliography In translation 1978, To Build a Castle, My Life as a Dissenter PDF. London, Andre Deutsch UK EDN, 1978. 
ISBN 0 233 97023 1. 352 pp. In Russian, 1979, I vos vrashchatsi, a, Vitor. New York, Kronika IZD Vo, 1979. 386 pp. 1979, To Build a Castle, My Life as a Dissenter. New York, Viking Press, 1979. ISBN 978-0-670-71640-1 In Russian, 2007, I vos vrashchatsi, a, Vitor. Svobodny Chelovic. Moskva, Novo IZD Vo, 2007. ISBN 978-5-98379-090-2 1987, To Choose Freedom. Hoover Press Publication. Stanford, Calif, Hoover Institution Press, 1987. ISBN 978-0-8179-8442-7 1995, Jugumana Moscow, Un dissident dans les archives du Kremlin in French, Paris, Robert Lafont, 1995. ISBN 2-221-07460-2. 616 pp. In Russian, Moskovsky Prat, S. S., Paris, Moskva. Ruske, A. Uh, M. Y. S. L. I. Z. D. Vo. Mick. 1996. ISBN 978-5-87902-071-7 In German 1996, A Breachnung MIT Moscow. Das Sojetisch Unrechtsregime und die Schud des Westens, Bergisch Gladbach In Polish Moskowski Proces in Polish. Warsaw, 1999. ISBN 83-7227-190-9 Judgment in Moscow, Soviet Crimes and Western Complicity forthcoming, May 2019 1999, Soviet Archives, online archive compiled by Vladimir Bukovsky, prepared for publication by the late Julia Zaks and Leonid Chernikov 2016, the Bukovsky Archives upgraded version of 1999 archive, in Russian 1979, I Vosvrsatsa to build a castle New York, is Hironica, 1979, p. 384. The first Russian publication of Bukovsky's memoirs was given a biblical title see Ecclesiastes, v. 6. 1989, I vos Vitor to build a castle. Mteatr periodical. 1989. ISSN 0131-6885. 1996, Moskovsky Process Judgment in Moscow. M. Paris Mick Russ Meisel. 1996. p. 525. ISBN 5-87902-071-1. 2001, Bukovskij v. Jarosenko i Ladin M. Radicinska i Suvarov v. 2001, Zolotoy Eselin The Golden Echelon. Sobrin M. Gudel Press. p. 256. ISBN 5 8026 0082 9. 2007, I Vosvrsatsa Vitor to build a castle. Svobodnij Selovic. M. Novo Izdvo 2007. p. 348. ISBN 978 5 98379 090 2. First serialized in TEATR periodical, see above, 1989, 2008, Pisma Ruskogo Potesist Letters of a Russian Traveler. Moscow and St. Petersburg, Nestor Istoria Nestor History, 2008. 2013, Nasledniki Lavrentshevry Putin i ego komanda the heirs of Lavrenti Beria, Putin and his team. M. Algorith 2013. ISBN 978-5-4438-0337-1, 2014. Tajna Imperia Putina. Budit li Dvorchevi Paravorit? Putin's Secret Empire. Will there be a palace coup? M. Algorith 2014. ISBN 978 5 4438 0880 2. 2015. Nara. Tazlij Vibor Rossi on the edge. Russia faces a hard choice. M. Algorith 2015. ISBN 978 5 906798 82 4. Topic documentaries They Chose Freedom 2005 Four Parts Documentary by Vladimir Kara Mirza Jr. Russia, Chechnya, Voices of Dissent 2005 with Bukovsky, Yelena Bonner, Natalia Gorbanevskaya, Anna Politovskaya, Ahmed Zakhaev and others. 
The Soviet Story 2008 documentary by Edvin Snor Parallels, Events, People 2014 36 parts documentary series by Natella Boltianskaya Topic References A Chronicle of Current Events 1968-1982 Other Topic Further Reading Topic In the Soviet Union Lettington, Roger the 11th of April 1971. Interrogation of Russian Revealing. Eugene Register Guard. p. 9a. Jenner, F. A. The 11th of August 1972. Bukowski. Nature. 238, 5363, 361. Bibcode, 1972 Notor.238, 361 J. doi, 10.1038-238361C0. Kavala, Pavel September to December 1973. Der Unbekemme Zug by Vladimir Bukowski J. The Inconvenient Witness by Vladimir Bukowski. Studies in Soviet Thought. 13 3 quarters, 339-342. JSTOR 20098579. Bernstein, Robert, Bessie, Simon, Carlyle, Henry, Percy, John, Jovanovich, William, et al., 27 June 1974. Soviet Inhumanity. The New York Review of Books. Topic After his expulsion to the West Bukowski vows fight for rights. Beaver County Times. 20 December 1976. P. B. 12. Helsinki Pact Didn't Help, Bukowski. Ocala Star Banner. 20 December 1976. P. 2 A. Neuerberg, Hans the 20th of December 1976. Bukowski says prisoners got worse treatment after Helsinki Accords. Lewiston Evening Journal. P. 28. Rich, Vera, the 13th of January 1977. The Bukowski Perspective. Nature. 265, 5590, 94. Bibcode, 1977 Notor.265, 94 R. doi, 10.1038, 265094A0. Gersten Zhang, James, the 1st of March 1977. Carter to meet with dissident Vladimir Bukovsky. Lewiston Evening Journal. P. 17. Carter meets Bukovsky, vows pursuit of freedom. The Spokesman Review, 2 March 1977. P. 3. Thorne, Lyudmila, 6 March 1977. Rescuing Vladimir Bukovsky. Soviet dissident saved by mother. Lakeland Ledger. P. 7D. Navat, Georges, Kravitz, Mark, 1977. URSS, GLI Scrittori del Descenso, Bukowski, Kalimov, Daniel, Gwinsberg, Pliusk, Solzhenitsyn, USSR, Writers of Descent, Bukowski, Shalimov, Daniel, Ginsberg, Pliush, Solzhenitsyn in Italian. Venezia, La Biennale di Venezia. OCLC 797,904,993. Topic. Two years on. A dissident enjoys his freedom, admires democracy. The Gazette, the 14th of November 1978, p. 39. Vladimir Bukovsky, two years later. The Daily Telegraph, the 13th of November 1978, p. 40. Vladimir Bukovsky now has a new life before him. Herald Journal, the 13th of November 1978, p. A3. Piepert, James, the 13th of November 1978. Vladimir Bukovsky, two years later. Nashua Telegraph, p. 40. Topic: <laughs> To build a castle, 1978. Serebriakova, Elena, 2012. Mir glazami disidenta po nij v Bukovskogo. I vozvrsatsa vidar. Quote closing parenthesis quote. The World Through the Eyes of a Dissident, Bukowski's The Wind Returns, English Title, To Build a Castle, PDF, Upravlinsko Konsultirovani 4, 132-138. Archived from the original, PDF, on 1 March 2016. In Russian. Topic. Judgment in Moscow, 1995. Slipentok, Vladimir. Winter 1998. Was the Soviet Union run by the KGB? 
Was the West duped by the Kremlin? A critical review of Vladimir Bukovsky's Jugyamana Moscow. Russian History. 25 453–461. 10.1163, 1876331983X00211. In the 21st century Boabir, Philip July 2009. Vladimir Bukovsky and Soviet Communism. The Slavonic and East European Review. 87 3, 452–487. JSTOR 40650408. Zubov, Mikhail Mikhail Zubov 28 April 2015. Kak Vladimir Bukovskij Pobedal Karatelnu Sihiatri. Ludmila Alekseva. Vrad Li Ada Legendarna Figura Zanimatsa Detskim Porno. Quote, quote. How Vladimir Bukovsky Defeated Punitive Psychiatry. Lyudmila Alekseva. This legendary figure is hardly likely to be engaged in child pornography. Moskovsky Komsomales in Russian. Topic. External links. Topic. In English Appearances on C-SPAN, May 1989. The Democratic Revolution in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. Forum. Vladimir Bukovsky News Archives, links, photos, video, public domain writings, official statements, contact info, maintained by U.S. Group Bukovsky Center. Russia, Chechnya, Voices of Dissent 2005 features Vladimir Bukovsky, Yelena Bonner, Natalia Gorbanevskaya, Anna Politovskaya, Ahmed Zakhaev and others. A lecture by Bukovsky at the Cato Institute, 69 minutes on YouTube uploaded on 7 January 2012. The Bukovsky Archives, Classified Soviet Documents 1937-1994. Over 80 files about the Suppression of Dissent, 1970–1979", include documents concerning Bukovsky's activities as a Soviet dissident, his periods of imprisonment in the USSR, his exchange in 1976 for Luis Corvalin and his ongoing campaign in the West against the Soviet regime. Michael Ledeen 2012, The Greatest Subversive of Our Times, PJ Media website, 29 December 2012. Topic. In Russian An Alphabet of Descent, Bukovsky 2011. Alphabet Inakomislia. Bukovskij. Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. 29 November 2011. Bukovsky on Voice of America 2014. Vladimir Bukovskij na Golos Ameriki. 19 February 2014, 40 minutes on YouTube. Natella Boltianskaya, the 16th of February 2015. Divadkat Deveta Syria. Postroit Zamak. Voice of America. Episode 29. To build a castle. Part 1. Natella Boltianskaya, the 2nd of March 2015. Tridkata Syria. Postroit Zamak Cast 2. Voice of America. Episode 30. To build a castle. Part 2. Official 2008 presidential campaign site